best friend. Let's name her Sally. Sally was homeschooled by her mother, except her mother decided that homeschooling meant handing her a word search once a week. Eventually, Sally's mom gave up, and Sally was pushed into public school in fourth grade. Sally's first day, she was nervous about math because she's never done anything besides one plus one equals two. And she was scared about science because she didn't realize that was part of the curriculum. But Sally is not alone. With homeschooling becoming more and more popular within the United States, we need more regulations to push for safety in their education. Egan, the appointed child advocate for Connecticut, wrote an article in May in 2018 in the Hartford Current that 11 states had no homeschooling regulations. And the ones that did, didn't have very many. As engaged members of this society, I hope you see that there is a problem. And I hope you see that we can make a change. And I hope you've come to realize that we can make that change now. I am a future teacher, and I've been in a practicum where I've seen kids who are behind, and they were never even homeschooled. I can't even imagine what Sally was feeling when she never had any prior knowledge. I've created three kind of regulations that help with credibility, accountability, and safety. My three regulations are background checks, submitting student progress, and monthly check-ins. So how do parents become teachers in their home school? There are no background checks for parents before they become homeschooled teachers. Background checks would check for child abuse, sexual offenses, or other crimes that would disqualify them from working within a school, according to an article in, from, in 2018 from the Coalition for Responsible Home Education. Why would we let a parent become a teacher when they would never be hired within a school system? Egan wrote in the Hartford Current in 2018 about what officials found in 2017 about a family. The mother was able to pull her daughter out of public school with just a paragraph with the intent to homeschool her. Later, officials investigated and this mother had multiple accounts of sexual abuse on this daughter, on her daughter. But background checks would not only check for child abuse, sexual abuse, or other crimes. They would also check the education of the parent. In an article put out by the Coalition for Responsible Home Education, only 11 states require parents to have some sort of education qualification whether that's a high school diploma, a GED, or some kind of college level class. How would we expect a parent to teach their child what they never learned themselves? After background checks, we need some way to hold accountability for the parents. That's why I pushed for a regulation about submitting student progress. Right now, homeschooled Kids do not have to have any kind of documentation of how well they're progressing. I remember when I was in elementary school, I was constantly tested by the state government to see how well my teacher was doing and see how I was progressing compared to everyone else in my grade. But according to Dufert, an education reporter, he wrote an article for the Concord Monitor about how in New Hampshire in 2014, they attempted to pass a bill that parents would have to document their, their students' progress with the government, a school district, or a principal. Someone to see that they're actually getting taught. The bill didn't pass. How can we assume that a homeschooled student is getting taught when parents are not required to show documentation? They have to take documentation, but who's, show, who's being told that that's true? After background checks and after submitting student progress, who's ensuring that these students are safe? 
homeschooled students are more vulnerable to sexual, emotional, and physical abuse. They're more vulnerable to confinement, food deprivation, and sex trafficking. Sanchez, a reporter for CNN, wrote about a Sandcastle Day School in January of 2018. Officials investigated this private school in Southern California, and what they found was horrifying. 12 kids, students of this school, which was in David Turpin's basement, were handcuffed to their bed in horrifying conditions. But they're not alone. Coleman and Brightville wrote in the LA Times in February of 2018 about a young girl in Arizona pulled out of public school and homeschooled by her mother, locked in her room, routinely raped by her father. Egan wrote about a young man who was 17 years old with special needs. He was also pulled out of public school, locked in his room, and officials found him a year later, passed away because of food deprivation for the special diet that his mother put him on. While some parents succeed with homeschooling and their kids pass with flying colors, who's standing up for the kids who aren't so lucky? Jill Patterson, the Title IX coordinator here at Missouri State, told my elementary education class on October 24th of 2018 about mandated reporters. Mandated reporters are the teachers, the doctors, the counselors that see kids daily. And they're, they report on any suspicious activity of child abuse or food deprivation, they are required to report. When kids are homeschooled, the only person they see is probably their parent. And there's no mandated reporters to ensure that they're safe. That's why Coleman, the co-founder for the Coalition for Responsible Homeschooling, who was homeschooled herself all throughout elementary school, middle school, and high school, suggests that every single student who is homeschooled meet with a mandated reporter. But that's not good enough if the parent is in the room. These meetings have to be by themselves so the kid is able to speak out against their parent. They have to be in the home so the mandated reporter can see that the home is safe, clean, and school is actually happening there. And I push for this regulation for these monthly check-ins to be surprise visits. That way the parent can't put on an act and there's no way that they can cover up the suspicious activity because these kids have to be safe. As engaged members of this community and as college students who are being educated, it is our duty to ensure that the future students of the future leaders of America are being taught correctly. It is our duty to ensure that homeschooling becomes more regulated for my friend Sally, who was only taught by word searches. And for those kids that are stuck in their home, locked in their room. They need safety and public school mandated reporters to ensure that they get the education they need. And we can do that by background checks, submitting student progress, and even monthly check-ins. It is our duty to ensure that every single child gets the education they need because every person in the United States has the right to education.